Okay, so this is Donkey Export, and today we are building a cloud server. And I'm sorry, I have to apologize for some of the footage because I used my phone to film some of this and uh, it didn't go too well, so I apologize for that. But Okay, so this is Donkey Export, and today we are building a super low power uh, cloud storage server for ourselves. So, uh, the basis of that cloud storage server is this. This is a ra ra uh, radsk, radsk, okay, uh, I'm, I have no idea how to pronounce that, uh, a rock 5B. So this is a small uh, single board computer based on the rock chip RK3588, I think. This heatsink here is, uh, I can show you the CPU. Uh, here you have the CPU. So that's the rock chip RK3588. Eighty-eight, I think. The card has a lot of a lot of connectivity. So uh, let's start with the ports then. Uh, of course, you have a headphone port, the USB-C port. That's for power, so you can use uh, USB-C power delivery to power this thing. Dual HDMI outputs, a couple of USB two ports, a couple of USB three ports, and a two point five gig NIC. So the two point five gig NIC that's gonna come in handy when going to use this as a storage server, even though. Outright performance is not the priority here. Uh, the priority is uh, keeping the power consumption as low as possible. Now this particular card has eight gigabytes of memory, but you can get it with 16 as well. This thing, that's a M.2 to, to SATA. Uh, that's an M.2, I can't remember the key, but this is a slot for a Wi-Fi card actually. Uh, but uh, I, I purchased, <laughs> the funny story, I purchased the wrong one. So I purchased the wrong key because there's also an M.2 slot on the back here. And this slot supports PCIe 3.0 by 4, so that's four lanes of PCIe uh, 3. The uh, storage solution for the uh, operating system is the chip you see here. So this is eMMC storage. Yeah, there's also a microSD card slot here if you want to run it uh, over a microSD card instead. So flashing the operating system, we actually hooked, uh, hooked it up to the PC use, uh, via the USB-C port. So that seems to be a functional port. Uh, so if you... You can uh, power this by the pins as well, so if you power it by the pins, you probably can use the USB-C port for something else. But anyway, uh, we hooked it up to the PC with the uh, USB-C port, and we pressed the button you see here. And when we did that, it uh, we launched the the Rock software on the uh, what the Rack Radska software on the computer, and uh, you can flash the uh, EMC storage from there, or you can alternatively use. Uh, one of these. So this, this is uh, like an adapter uh, eMMC to micro SD. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to show up in Windows using this adapter, so that's why I have to had to uh, connect the board itself to the computer. But when I did, it worked just fine, and now it's perfectly functional. I actually just tore this thing down, so it works great. Uh, I designed them myself, which means they're not very good designs if I'm being honest. <laughs> so uh, you can see the uh, uh, there's of course uh, some ventilation on the back here and then you have these two uh, slots those are for the hard drives so you can see the hard drives they have uh, these things on the sides and they just slide in there but the problem was I this is a bit too low, so the uh, when you use the SATA cable, because I didn't think this thing entirely through. So, ah, there we go. When you use a SATA cable like this, uh, uh, my initial thought was to use the 90 degree angle uh, on the front of the, uh, the hard drive, uh, because there's a 140 millimeter fan coming in here. Uh, and I would have to use the 90 degree to have enough space for the fan and the hard drives. Uh, the problem with that is when you use this uh, connector on the M.2 slot, uh, you can't actually get the disk in, so they, they crash. Uh, by the way, I forgot to talk about the disk. So these are two 12 terabytes Seagate drives. Uh, these are actually used. I know, I know, we probably shouldn't use uh, used hard drives because they probably have a shorter lifespan than new ones. But new ones are really expensive, and I got these two for a very, very nice price. So that's why I used them. And they are SATA drives, not uh, SAS drives. So the, uh, I do have the other storage server that I built a long time ago with eight uh, SAS drives. And the issue with that is power consumption. 
So the, the, when the system's powered on, it basically seeps down 100 watts all the time. Of course, part of the reason is I use eight drives, and the more drives you have, the more power consumption you're going to use. That's why we only have two drives, and they will be set up in a RAID 1. So I didn't want to use just one drive, because uh, we do like a bit of redundancy. So we use two drives, that's the, like the minimum redundant you can have. All right, so uh, more rambling. I quite like the design of these drives, by the way. It's like they're milled out of a single block of aluminum. The, the updated case. Uh, so I designed this in Fusion 360, and I'm not very good in Fusion. I mean, I, I have made a lot of small stuff in Fusion 360, but this was like more of a big project. And uh, and when I went to edit uh, the, the, the model, I it's just, it, the Fusion file is just a big, big mess. So... Uh, uh, this is what it looks like now. Now we have, uh, theoretically, space for four hard drives, but there's not really enough space between the hard drives to fit four here. But we are going to be using the topmost slot and probably the uh, second to last. So these two slots are the slots we are going to use, uh, which should work fine. So yeah, uh, of course, we are running Ubuntu on this uh, SPC. Uh, and I, it's a community edition of uh, Ubuntu with the, uh, drivers and stuff for hardware acceleration. So this is going to be really fun. So we can uh, utilize the the uh, GPU portion of the rock chip, and we can also utilize the what's it called NPU, like the yeah, AI accelerator stuff, uh, because it that's also on this chip. So a lot of stuff on one little chip that sips power. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, you can actually utilize these things in some of the software that we are going to host. So this will be my uh, replacement for Google Photos. So I do use Google Photos for like uh, JPEGs and stuff, not for raw files. When I use uh, do photography raw files, so that I just dump them on the TrueNAS server. I forgot to show you the fan. So this this dirty fractal design fan. Uh, that's the 140 millimeter fan that's going to be cooling this entire thing. So both the hard drives and the Rock 5B card. So I messed up the thermal pad, but this is the heatsink for the. This is actually a heatsink from an LSI HPA card. And that's the heatsink for the CPU. As I said, I've already tested its setup and it, uh, depending on the ambient temperature, it idles uh, about between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. Under load is between 30 and, uh, 30 and 40 degrees Celsius. So perfectly safe. You might be wondering how you're going to be powering those drives. Well, I'm going to be using this thing. Uh, so this, uh, it's a, uh, I forget what it's called. Anyway, 12 volts goes in here, and this thing here, that's 12 volts as well. So the connector to the left of the input, that's also 12 vol volts. And that's going to the hard drives. So you can see here, we have dual SATA connectors. And then we did some sol soldering and some taping. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I, of course, color coding the cables is not my strong suit, so all of them are red, uh, even though uh, uh, that's 5 volt and that's ground. Uh, uh, anyway, and that's, yeah, so uh, 12 volts goes in here. <sighs> Sorry about the rambling. 12 goes, volts goes in here, 5 volts comes out here. Uh, because the drives, uh, I think they need both 12 and 5 volts. Uh, if you use, take a look, you can see there's, yeah, so here, 5 and 12 volts. Yeah, so uh, I think it needs both those voltages. And uh, as I said, I've already tested this and it works fine. I use a 12 volt, uh, three and a half amp adapter, I think. So it's plenty of power for the drives. I only use the, that power supply for the drives though. The HP, uh, the, the SPC has a separate power supply. So I, I I don't use the same because I, was, I wasn't sure if that power supply would be able to handle both the drives uh, at maximum. So, when, you, when they spin up, they draw a lot of power. Well, a lot of power. Uh, and if this thing was like doing a hard working task or something, then maybe that would be too much power for one power supply. So they are on separate power supplies. Okay, now I'm going to be installing all the software and I'll show you later. Okay, so the server is set up and it's running. And here we are in Portainer. And here are all the different Docker containers that are currently running on our system. And all the services that are running are in Docker containers. So here you have the Docker containers uh, relating to image. There's Jellyfin, Omada controller, that's for the access point and the switch. 
uh, own cloud uh, portainer itself and sync thing so all of these are running as docker containers uh, let's take a look at sync thing uh, so sync thing has finished uh, uh, syncing with the true nas server so here you can see there are 58306 uh, images that are have been uh, backed up to uh, to the cloud server so those are now stored both on the cloud server and on the true nas server and uh, the, the cool thing about sync thing is of course it will sync these two folders uh, uh, all the time so if i uh, after i've been outside the shooting pictures i come home i want to dump the raw files on the server usually i dump them on the true nas server but sometimes i turn that off because it uses a lot of power so uh, instead of dumping it on the true nas server maybe i just jump dump it on the cloud server and the next time i turn the true nas server on the uh, sync thing will sync the new files that i dumped on the cloud server back to true nas so all the files will be on both places all the time well all the time i, I mean as long as this thing is up and running of course when i'm when it's turned off it will obviously only be stored on the cloud server uh, so yeah that's quite uh, nice so that's 1.2 terabytes of photos um Here's the uh, overview. This is the cockpit overview. Uh, you can see the memory is currently sitting at 6.6 .6 gigabytes of 7.7. .7, uh, and that's because we are running CFS uh, as the file system and uh, CFS caches a lot of the memory. So if we take a look at HTOP on the, the, uh, the cloud server, you can see memory uh, 2.9 gigabytes. And 2.9 gigabytes that that's the so all the services are taking up 2.9 gigabytes and uh, CFS is caching the rest. Uh, we also have a bit of swap space because when I ran without swap space, uh, the server would sometimes hang. Uh, so I had to have uh, uh, some swap space. Uh, right now you can see it's idling. It's not really doing anything. Uh, the sync thing has finished uh, syncing, so it's it has been sitting idle for quite a while now. Uh, so we can take a look at Home Assistant and uh, look at the power consumption. Right, so here we have the hard drive power consumption. Uh, so this, here you can see it was syncing, we are syncing, and uh, around 20 watts while it was doing that. And uh, right now it's just sitting at idle, so that's 13 to 14 watts. And that's not uh, in standby, that's just idling. I, th I thought I had uh, set this up to go into standby after 20 minutes of inactivity but uh, I, I did this before as well and then it it would never actually go into standby and that was because the uh, own cloud was running a health check like every 30 seconds or something uh, which prevented the disk from going into standby. Uh, we are going to try to force it into standby now and see uh, if any services are keeping them on. Exit HTOP and then we do HD parm dash uh, standby I think is little y and sleep is capital Y. Uh, dev SDA dev STB. Of course. Super So the disks are now going to stand by. You can see the power consumption just dropped to 4.7 watts. So that's uh, now we can see if any services are keeping them awake, uh, it will soon jump up in power consumption. But uh, so in standby, the disks use 4.7 watts. I'm not quite sure why it didn't go into standby. Maybe I ha haven't set it up after all, or maybe I haven't set it to uh, to, to, to uh, set the disk to standby every time after reboot because i think if you run the H hd parm uh, command uh, it's it uh, and, and you reboot the server you have to set the hd parm command again of course i'm sure there are a way to put it on permanently but uh, i haven't figured it out yet uh, so 4.7 watts that's the disks uh, when it's idling and i'm using the toy app to monitor the power consumption so uh, i'm going to just do a screen record on my phone and as you can see here, the power consumption of the cloud server right now, it's 2.7 watts. And that, that's what the, the power supply draws from the sockets. Of course, the power consumption of the, the board itself might be a bit lower because there's always some loss. So I'm, I'm basically using a USB adapter as a power supply. And I think they are pretty efficient on low, uh, uh, lo low wattage, uh, a lot more efficient than, uh, say, a ATX power supply. So yeah, two points. Uh, so three watts on the 
uh, board itself and uh, 5 watts on the hard drives in standby, so that's 8 watts in total in standby. And that's pretty good. So while the disks were active, we saw a power consumption of 13, 14, uh, 13, 13, 14 plus uh, 3, so 16 to 17 watts uh, in standby for the entire thing. Okay, let's. I'm just going to upload some photos and the image has to make some thumbnails. Okay, so HTOP. Now you can see the CPUs are starting, the cores are starting to become under more heavy load. We are up to 13 watts of power consumption now. 13 watts and yeah, so 20, yeah, uh, well, the hard drives will of course go up and down, but you do get the average figure here, so. Uh, when the entire system is working, we are, let's say 20 watts on the disks. So 20 watts, 13, that's 33 watts under load. That's not too bad. Not uh, considering the entire system is actually working, both the hard drives and the CPU. And uh, yeah, so power consumption, pretty good. Now I want to show you how impressive image is. Okay, so now I want to show you the search feature in, so we can do cars, Nissan GTR. That's a R34, R35, that's a Supra. I mean, that that's pretty good, impressive. Uh, let's do Audi Quattro, Audi Quattro, these four, and this one. Uh, so it will show you a lot of pictures, and then the closest match will be the, on the top. So we can do birds as well. Uh, common buzzard. All these top photos are of a common buzzard. Uh, second row, there's only two photos that not that's not a common buzzard, and that's these two. Let's do puffin. So that was pretty easy. Uh, all of these photos are of a puffin. All the top three rows are puffins. And that's not a puffin, but uh, these are. Uh, yeah, so we can do loon. And all of these mm. photos. That didn't sound good, that was a 3D printer. All of these photos are of a loon, so that's pretty impressive in my opinion. Image is fantastic. I highly recommend you try it out if you haven't, or if you're looking to replace Google Photos. It was basically just image that I really wanted to show you. Now let's see if the ROCK 5B can saturate the 2.5 gig connection. So this computer is also on 2.5 gig and the, the ROCK 5B is on 2.5 gig. Here we have a folder with pictures and uh, some video. It's a bit over 2 gigs. Now let's see what kind of a speed we get when transferring this to the C pool on the ROCK 5B. I also have HTOP up so you can see what the CPU is doing and the memory. So here we get 250 megabytes per second. You see one core is pegged, well almost pegged, so SMB is mainly uh, dependent on, the, on single core performance it seems, and you can see the CFS cache, or CFS is caching a lot of the files, and when that cache filled up, the speed dropped. So uh, yeah, we do get the full speed uh, until the memory is used up and then it drops. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with the performance, especially for a cloud server. So for performance, I use the TrueNAS server, but this for a cloud server, it's, it's great. I'm very happy with it. Have it. The server is up and running and everything's just fine. Uh, I can recommend this setup if you want to low, low, uh, low power consumption and I guess low power uh, cloud file storage server or whatever we're going to call it. Uh, using an SPC, I don't really have a problem with that. You have all the other alternatives such as an Intel N100 or stuff like that. I guess those are fine as well, but uh, I really like to use the, these small S SVCs. I use them uh, a lot. Uh, I mean, this is the first non-Raspberry Pi one I have. I also have a, a password manager, Passbolt, running Raspberry Pi model 3B+. I have the Clipper running the 3D printer that's on Raspberry Pi 4. And Home Assistant is also running on the Raspberry Pi 4. So I love using these uh, small SPCs to do various small tasks. Of course, you can use a larger computer and just run everything on that. But uh, yeah, I'd quite like to tinker with these small things, so I think that's fun. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.